take a listen now. Are these two people the same? Hi, this is Lynn. Leave me a message. My brain. Hard to come up with words. Well, Fox 45 has been investigating this disgusting black mold found in a Dayton apartment. Doctors say it's caused all sorts of health problems for Linda McCluskey, including her impaired speech. And tonight, thanks to our investigation, the city is now looking into the matter. Kelly May is live with more. Well, Deb, Linda McCleskey's daughter actually found the mold when she dropped something and pulled a nightstand away from the wall. When she did, she found that wall was covered in black mold, and doctors determined that was the source of Linda's severe health problems. Tonight, the city of Dayton is finally doing something to help her fight back against the property owner. But I didn't know it was there. That's how Linda McCleskey sounded in April after a year living with all this mold hiding behind furniture and pictures. Back then, Fox 45 brought in a mold removal expert. If you are starting to feel ill or something like that, I've it could been it, sick. That could be definitely directly linked to the mold. It affected me mentally. This almost ruined your life. This almost killed you. No, it did ruin my life. It ruined my life because now I'm on disability. Linda today has been through extensive speech therapy. She moved to a clean apartment in Fairborn. I checked these walls. But now she's on social security because of the financial hardship, extensive medical bills, mold removal, and moving have caused her. She can't work because of sickness from the mold. She used to be a nurse. I would take care of people like me now. Eight months later, the city of Dayton's Human Relations Council is investigating Linda's housing situation, looking at the property owner's liability. I still blame them because we weren't like this when we moved in. She's seeking five grand in damages, says the property owners won't pay. She's thankful the city's looking into it, but worried about how long it will take and worried for who's living in her old apartment now. I could have died. You could have died. Yeah. If they hadn't helped me, if my daughter hadn't found it, I'd been dead. I'm Knight Douglas for Metro Focus. New York City public housing is crumbling, and according to the people living there, so is their health. Tenants who live in the nitro controlled apartments say they have to deal with the lingering effects of leaky ceilings, mold, vermin, and a massive roach infestation, all of which they say are having a collective ill effect on their well-being. Making the situation worse, many occupants had to endure this winter's brutal cold without any heat due to a trove of broken boilers. Tenants, low-income housing advocates, and city officials have placed the blame squarely with NYCHA's leadership. Last week, its chairwoman, Shola Ayoteye, resigned amid the swirling controversy. But more concerning than assigning blame are the long-term health effects on the 400,000 people who call NYCHA apartments home. As part of our initiative, Chasing the Dream, Poverty, Inequity, and Opportunity in America, we spoke to those who feel that living in NYCHA-controlled units are literally making people sick. It wears a lot, you know, when you wake up and you have to smell mold every day. When you wake up, your toilet is not working. When you wake up, you come outside, you see the walls, and you see your tenants saying that their children are sick or they sick. Helene Red laments about the living conditions at the Bailey houses in the Bronx. I have two grandkids that I have that lives with me, and I'm testing them for lead tomorrow at their physical. Why should I have to test them for lead? She and a number of residents took me on a tour of the building, showing me issue after issue and the toll it's taking on them. We found that a number of the youth who seem to be born in the building um, have respiratory issues that later become diagnosed as asthma. In this apartment, one resident showed me her water-soaked carpet from a leaky ceiling. Apartment after apartment and tenant after tenant, they told me about. Mold. 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 It's all over the apartment. It's something that it just grows. I don't, I don't know what it is. It was such a bad leak that they were taking it down and they, would, they had to knock it down and close the water because the, it was just coming down in gush. They had to take off her uh, mirror and everything that she had here. And uh, this is the results of what they've done and, have, and haven't been back. How long ago was this? This has been going on for about six months already. This is, this is from six months ago? Six months. These wet and damp conditions make for a perfect breeding ground for mold and mildew. 
Lenore Porter showed me the gaping hole from incomplete work in her kitchen and bathroom. How do you take a shower in a wall that's not here? Well, I do the best that I can. Um, I just take the shower, I'll take my shower, and the water hits the, the bag. So that's how we take a shower. No matter what we pay, we are all human first, and then the rest. You know, we, you, you have to realize that we are human beings and we are entitled to quality of life. Within the past few weeks, NYCHA has come in and made repairs. At the Amsterdam houses in Manhattan, work is underway to replace the aging roof. And back at the Bailey houses, the ceiling and wall in the hallway are being patched up. But those address only a small fraction of the problems plaguing NYCHA buildings across the city. Earlier this year, we visited the Redfern houses in Queens. You can literally smell the mold as you enter the building. This doesn't need a ticket. Look, it's the primary staircase. That ain't overnight. You literally, that look like bread mold too. Living in poor quality housing has short and long-term health effects. Dr. Lorna Thorpe is a professor and director of the Epidemiology Department of Population Health at NYU School of Medicine. She's completed extensive research on residents living in public and low-income housing and the relationship to their health. She's been a part of two reports on the topic, one in 2012 and the latest in 2015. She says short exposure to these conditions can have an impact and prolonged exposure makes things much worse and is a detriment to their mental health as well as physical health. If you're living with exposure to mold, uh, lead, uh, pest infestation, it can have impacts of developing disease uh, like asthma or um, respiratory problems. And it can also over time compound with just the stress of living in, in a, an environment that is not healthy and uncomfortable and generally not a positive environment for an individual or a family. Dr. Thorpe's description of symptoms mirror the complaints from NYCHA residents. The mold, mice, and mildew can be seen and identified, but the unseen stress of the situation is just as problematic. When you want to come home, you want to live in, you know, be able to sit down and probably read a magazine or watch some TV, and you have to worry about leaks and your toilet overflowing, and it, it, you don't have any peace. You, your peace is always compromised here. Bailey House residents have been trying to take a proactive role. The board has partnered with local community groups to try and address health concerns and document issues, and it looks like the course of complaints are getting attention. Governor Cuomo visited the Jackson houses in the Bronx in March to see the conditions firsthand. He's since declared a state of emergency. As the chief representative of the people of the state of New York, I am sorry for the conditions that you are dealing with. I am telling you that no respectable New Yorker will take a walk through that apartment and allow it to continue. The governor allocated $250 million in state funds to the agency and appointed an independent monitor to oversee how the money is spent. A shakeup in leadership is coming too. The chair of the Housing Authority is stepping down at the end of April. Charlene Nemens, founder of Public Housing Communities, says she's cautiously optimistic about what the future leadership will bring. If it wasn't for people like you, you know, Metro Focus and other media outlets, they would have already gone back and sat down and been status, you know, the status quo, the same as usual. We're now saying time has changed and we need to make sure that the voices of the residents are heard. All new tonight at six, a Jacksonville woman says the new year is bringing more of the same, at least when it comes to conditions in her rental home. After enduring what she says has been months of mold and other problems, she has reached out to our On Your Side team to try and get some help. Our own Andrew Badillo contacted the landlord, and Andrew went himself out there today to check out what this woman calls a living nightmare. Watch the door, it does not. It Open the door off. to Haley Cook's home. Because I've done pretty much everything, cleaning was. And the smell hits you right in the nostrils. Mentally draining is not just the word, it's also physically draining. I've literally been so stressed. Cook says she first noticed mold in her home in August after her roof and sink leaked. Since then, she has been in a battle with her landlord to get it cleaned up. 
fast, we realized it wasn't going to be something that he was going to actually take care of. So we started looking into how to legally fight him the right way. And that's when December came and we were like, this is what we got to do. We reached out to the landlord. He declined our interview request and told us it was, quote, a non-story. But when Cook contacted city code enforcement officials, they found 12 violations ranging from a loose toilet. When I sit down, it wiggles to a broken countertop. Cook also hired a mold inspector. Her landlord did as well. We spoke with TCB EnviroCorp's Mark Mongan, who conducted the mold test ordered by Cook. The mold count on the owner's laboratory report was over 7,000 mold spores inside. That's an extremely high uh, amount of mold spores to have inside. My mold spore amount was, uh, when we did ours inside, same place in the living room, was uh, over 400. Cook says she doesn't feel the house is livable. She sent her children to stay at their grandparents' house. She says her reptile rescue business has suffered because of the conditions in the house. I want to be somewhere safe for my kids and for my animals. It's not safe here. And the way to do that is only going to be with the money that I'm owed. In Jacksonville, Andrew Badillo, First Coast News, on your side. TV station in town where you're going to see this next story. Parents fed up with their school system finally getting their voices heard. They attended a packed town hall meeting at a fire station in Woodbine last night, bringing up the issue of mold in schools. ABC2 was the only television station with a reporter at that meeting. One parent said her daughter attends Glenwood Middle and gets so many headaches, she has to change schools now. Parents also told Howard County Executive, Executive Alan Kittleman they're not getting enough communication from the school system and have to rely on ABC 2's coverage to get the information they need. The reason why we feel this is a big issue is not just that there's mold growing in schools, but children are actually becoming sick because the mold's growing in schools. And, you know, once this blew open at Glenwood, it's like, you know, all these other schools are now showing up. Thank you. Well, County Executive Killerman admits the communication from the school system could have been better, but does say by his contention, it is improving. Well, mold is everywhere in Charlotte. The damp spring weather causes mold to grow at remarkable rates. Yeah, this is the time. As Fox Charlotte's Derek James reports, it can quickly damage your home and your health. Whether it's a bad crawl space, a poorly ventilated bathroom, or a leak, yeah. if you have water damage that goes untreated... Within 24 to 48 hours, you get a little surprise on your hands. Maybe a big surprise. David Snell of Executive Restoration gets a lot of calls in spring when people notice a musty smell in their home or aren't feeling well. Sneezing, not being nauseated, headaches, watery eyes. David starts with the air quality inside and outside the home. The inside spore count, if it's higher than the outside, we've, we've got some serious concerns. Mold is growing behind your walls. It can be very hard to find, often impossible without the right equipment. David uses an infrared camera to find moisture inside the walls. You might have a, a gutter issue there. The source of a mold problem is often outside. David recommends using a downspout gutter extension. But are you safer if your house is newer? It really doesn't matter the age of your home. We can all have water damage issues. The key is to fully remove the damage quickly, because if you don't, your problem will continually come back. Derek James, Fox News. Covering Arlington, while the mother of two small children is upset with her apartment complex, she says her kids are getting sick from mold growing where they live. When confronting managers at the Oakwood Villa, she was allegedly told that there was very little they could do because mold is in the air. News for Jax went out to speak with the property manager, and now it appears that the city is going to get involved. This comes after we reviewed video of water pouring from the ceiling and pictures of mold growing on furniture and the walls. This is just part of what was found when News for Jax reporter Eric Avenier talked to the mom today. He joins us live now. Eric, you felt something when you first walked into the apartment, you said? 
Yes, I did. When I first walked into this apartment, you could feel how uh, damp it feels in here. In fact, get this. So outside, uh, the rain has finally started to, started, to, started to stop, which is a good thing because see right here, uh, this is one area where normally the, uh, the uh, woman who lives in this apartment says rain would come down this part of the wall. And look at that. You can see where uh, water damage from where the water has gotten trapped under the paint there. Now, there is mold in this apartment. Some of it has been painted over. There are other areas of this apartment where you can see it in plain sight. Water pouring from a bathroom ceiling, mold growing on the walls, children's toys, furniture, and inside this bedroom closet. This is what a mother of two small children says she has been dealing with while living at the Oakwood Villa apartment complex. We're not identifying her or her family because they were recently victims of gun violence and the shooter is yet to be captured. She says conditions in her apartment are worse when the weather is humid and rainy. The smell gets stronger. You can actually smell the mold in my kids' room. Definitely when it rains, oh, the whole, the whole front room will be wet. The woman also says her children have recently developed respiratory problems that require trips to the doctor. My biggest fear would be, you know, my kids definitely having long-term health issues. She says she has complained to management about the mold on several occasions, but says an explanation into why the mold was continuing to grow in her apartment was confusing. They basically told me, you know, the mold's in the air, so it's not much they can do about it. The apartments was renovated on top of the mold. Tuesday morning while she was at work, a maintenance worker came in and painted over some of the mold, but not all of it. This is the work order the maintenance man left in her apartment. The order explains that he used mold spray and painted over the mold, but it's unclear how deep the mold is embedded in the walls, meaning a solution to this problem may require more work to keep the mold from reappearing. Communication is key in any landlord-tenant relationship, and this is especially true when it comes to rental properties that's subsi subsidized by the federal government. But what are landlords and tenants obligated to do if a major problem like black mold breaks out in their unit? Five on your side troubleshooter Joe Paganakis has some answers for you right now. Well, black mold is a potentially hazardous situation, and for anyone with asthma, it can be deadly. Today, we help an Akron family with its black mold emergency and teach a lesson about landlord-tenant relations. Archie King needs a breathing machine to get him through the night, but in the past six months, problems at his Akron rental unit have him worried about his health. Problems that have forced him to post warning signs and close down his daughter's bedroom. I want something done about it. I mean, I'm, I'm tired of living like this. I've told him time and time we had mold. He keeps saying, well, no, we don't. But the proof can be seen everywhere. His daughter's closet is filled with black mold because of water penetrating through the walls. In some spots, moisture can be seen beating through the paint. Water pooling on the windowsills. They don't call you. They, all they want is the, the, the rent money. Archie King's wife says their landlord hasn't helped. She's now packed up her daughter's clothing in watertight containers. Her daughter now sleeps on the living room couch. She says she's upset because she don't want to sleep out here. I want my room back. I said, yeah, I know, but I don't want you in your room. I'd rather have you where you can breathe a little better. The landlord in this case refused an on-camera interview, instead explaining by phone that many of the problems at the unit were caused by the King family. The landlord says the Kings aren't taking care of the unit and aren't keeping it clean. Now, since the unit is federally subsidized through HUD, we took this case to the Akron Metropolitan Housing Authority. Yeah, we're scheduled to go back. Inspection Supervisor Terry Foster pledged to go back to the King's unit to initiate a permanent solution to the mold problems. We spell out for the landlord items that may need to be repaired. We give them a list and they're obligated to make those repairs in a timely fashion. Now, legally, black mold is the responsibility of the landlord just as long as the tenant didn't cause the moisture problem. Renters should take pictures of the mold and advise their landlords in writing. If the landlord doesn't respond, contact inspectors. If the landlord is cited, the case can be taken to housing court and your rent can be held in an escrow account until the problem is solved. More on how to deal with black mold hosted. Hey everybody, I'm Brad Means. I'm Jenny Montgomery. Thanks for joining us. Your local news at 5 begins with a deeper look into mold issues at an apartment complex in Augusta. You know, News Channel 6 first told you about 
All the concerns at Fox Den Apartments just off Wrightsboro Road in Augusta, where as many as 40 people say mold inside their apartments is causing health issues. They want something done about it. Tonight, News Channel 6's Renetta DuBose is getting down to the root of the mold problem. There she is, live in the newsroom with the latest. Renetta. Root or spore, Brad. Mm. At this point, if you find mold in your apartment, you notify the landlord, right? Well, now, if nothing is done about it, you can contact code enforcement. But all they can do is issue a violation and not correctly identify that it's mold. As many as 15 violations have gone out to the owners of Fox Den Apartments in the past three to four months after people living there complained of mold to code enforcement. Now, whether or not that's mildew or mold or something else, that's, that's, it's not something that we make the determination on. Roy Publico makes an educated guess as to whether mold, like the kind seen in this picture taken at Fox Den, is present, but he can't make a determination. There are 10,000 known types of mold. John Ashton can, though. The certified Augusta Mold Control and Removal owner says it takes 24 hours for mold to grow after something is wet, but it's the black mold that can have the worst health impact over time. Toxic black mold or stachybotrys will uh, produce a, a, a spore that carries with it a mycotoxin that when you inhale it can cause you to get cancer. My grandson who lives with me, he keeps a cold. Over in the Trinity Manor complex, Brenda Ivey says she keeps a cold too, and her health has declined after living there 30 years. She even had breast cancer surgery this week. The 54-year-old tells us the mold was so bad she switched units, but that still didn't help. That's mold in there. Despite bleach being a fix, Ivy says not a chance. No, I'm not putting my hand on that, no. Bleach is an antimicrobial. That's where it stopped. It's not a remediation tool used by anybody that's professional. We use something that invades the cell, fills it up with fluid, and it expands to the point where the cell bursts. All the genetic material is sprayed out. It is not only dead, it's also sterilized. That's what you use. But then you still have to tear out the infected building material. Now, for many renters, the issue of how to treat mold goes back to the lease they signed before moving in. Different rental companies, different policies. Now, failure to comply with a code enforcement violation can find the property owner in court for noncompliance. A Palm Springs couple is sleeping in their car tonight because mold has taken over their apartment. Their management office says it's not their fault. News Channel 5's Rochelle Ritchie spoke with both sides of this problem. She's joining us tonight with more. Rochelle? Shannon, the couple says they moved into the apartment six months ago and never suspected anything was wrong. It wasn't until after the lease was signed the mold began to surface in an astronomical amount. Paul Banna is a father of two and husband who lost his job, forcing him out of his previous home and here to Avondere Station Apartments in Palm Springs. He thought it would be a nice place to raise his two children, but never knew the danger inside his unit. The mold probably there, I cannot see them. Within two months, Banna says he started to notice black spots appearing on the ceiling. He soon realized it was mold and took his concerns to the leasing office. I want to explain to him, I cannot breathe in, my kids cannot breathe in. He says because the problem was ignored, the mold continued to grow and has now forced him and his wife to sleep in their SUV and their children to stay with family. It's been a hell, a lot of hell for me because I have to sleep in my car. Sometimes I tell God, I need to kill me because my, my life is very miserable. We took a tour of their apartment and found mold on every part of their ceiling, from the living room to the bedrooms, and even on their personal items. But who is to blame? The leasing office says the family. According to the lease agreement, tenants are responsible for running their AC to prevent mold from forming. If you keep air moving and you maintain low humidity, it will eliminate the opportunity for mold to grow. The manager and the maintenance the technician went and inspected, observed that the air conditioning wasn't being run, the humidity level was very high, there was this odor of mildew in the apartment. I cannot live in this in my place with no, uh, no, with no AC. My kids have to have AC to, 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 to live in. Okay. That's not true. And for that reason, the couple is being evicted and was given seven days to move. I feel like to walk, walk all over because I, can, I can't take it no more.
New right now at 5, some people living in what's supposed to be a luxury apartment complex say instead they're dealing with yeah, that's mold. It is a problem. Some of the problems that we've been telling you about, constant leaks and bugs, and now this for these poor folks. The park at Napoli is right by the intersection of Goldenrod Road and University Boulevard. It's not far from Full Sail and the University of Central Florida. Channel 9's Sabrina Maggiore is live at the complex tonight. Sabrina, one mother grew quite emotional when talking with you about the problem. Greg, that's right. She's one of a couple residents we spoke to here at the park at Napoli who say the problems here are more than just minor inconveniences. They're health concerns and they want to see conditions improve immediately. I was told it was a ready to move an apartment. New mother Taya Baez says this is what she found when her new family moved into the park at Napoli. There was the black mold, there was dog hair everywhere. There was fleas and there was roaches. After reporting the problems to property management and the corporate owners, Blue Rock Premier, Taya was asked to put down a second $750 deposit in order to move into a different unit. This is the new unit <laughs> that also has black mold. In the months since, Baez says she's tried to work with the property. But they don't fix it. They just ignore you. She's still paying $1,500 a month to live here and is worried about the impact this mold is having on her four-month-old son. He um, wakes up with a cough. He's throwing up a lot. Since he moved here? <sighs> like I'm just paying him to kill him. Kayla Pronsi has lived in the complex since 2018, but is not renewing her lease this year because of similar problems. Just everything's like falling apart, kind of. Orlando tenant power and representative Carlos Guillermo Smith say they've heard this story again and again from tenants. Basically, everyone here has had large structural problems. Today, we asked the property manager about these living concerns. While she didn't want to speak on camera, she told us the office has only received two complaints about mold and that they've worked with those tenants to resolve the issue. Now, Orlando Tenant Power says they are now working with over two dozen residents who want to see the issues here taken more seriously. This as Representative Guillermo Smith says he wants to see a tenant's bill of rights passed to better protect residents of who rent, including the ones at complexes like this. Reporting live in Winter Park, I'm Sabrina Majore, Channel 9 Eyewitness News.